Hey Podcast World and Lee Boyd. Hi, Rob Beller. <laughs> I put you into the podcast world because I think you're in it. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I thank you. I am in it. I'm I'm a part. I'm here. We have something really cool today. Did you see the movie Gladiator? I did oh. with uh with Russell Crow. Crow. Robert Robert Crow? Russell, Russell Crow. Crow. Russell Crowe, he won an yeah. Academy Award for it. Yeah, he rode a chariot. He, he did a lot of stuff. He he killed people. He won the day. Yeah. He avenged his family. I mean, all kinds of stuff. I don't remember all but, that. But uh, that has little to do with the point I'm about to make, <laughs> which, is, good. which is that we have somebody on the show today who shares a name with that guy. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's where you're going that's with where that. I'm going. You're yeah. with me now? You're, you're right. Okay. Yeah, I am okay. with you. And, and what is that name? We'll give our podcast audience a second to remember the name of that gentleman in the movie or the character in the movie. Yeah, not Russell Crowe. Not Crow, Russell Crowe, but, Crow, but, but, his, but his character. And it was Maximus. And today we have on um, our show Maximus, Maximus. Yanni, Yanni from kangaroo very excited to talk to him. why why are you so excited about that very excited i have my reasons let's hear yours because my reasons are because we got to know uh kangaroo at insured tech and they were just an interesting company they had a neat business plan where they were handing out their devices uh, to all the attendees in an effort to get them out in the hands of the uh, insured tech world and their booth was very interesting. They just stood out among typical insurance, you know, technology booths. And so I'm very excited to hear about the, the brain behind it, you know, the mind behind it. What about you? Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens if you start answering an email in the middle of Ma Maximus. <laughs> um, I ha I have my reasons. How about you, Lee? Oh, That's really? Okay. Well, then let me tell you what my reasons are, Lee, since you asked. Okay. I uh, did. I'm really interested in the IoT space. I think that because, because <laughs> pardon the expression, it's close to home. This is device okay. for the home. It has to do with this whole, I don't want to call it, well, whatever, flood, intrusion, whatever of devices and things that are coming into our home that are going to be living with us yeah. into the future. And just because they're there doesn't mean that they're going to be helpful or a positive addition. And what makes one a, a good thing to have in your home or not is very interesting to me. Who are the winners and losers going to be in this space? I think this is really interesting. I think if you're a security system company, Kangaroo is probably something that you have to pay pretty close attention to. Yeah, Rob, what what IoT devices do 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 you have inside of your home? Do you have any? A bunch. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering. I was just wondering what what you're using. Shut up. Do you, I read. Do you want to know what my passwords are too? That, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, I read an article that most people have an Alexa and they use it for what is the weather and, mm -hmm. you know, play those, this music. Yeah. Even, not even that. Just what it, like every morning we use ours. Alexa, what is the weather today? That's the number yes. one question we ask. Uh, but we also have uh, uh -huh. we have a nest, you know, a nest thermostat. We have a nest doorbell. Uh, we have some sensors that open the doors, motions uh, like, you know, uh, I actually have a kangaroo uh, that is actually going on my door. And, um, and, yeah, I'm just very interested. I don't, I don't have a water center at this time. I'm very interested in getting one of those. Uh, but yeah, I think the future of IOT is very neat and I'm all in. I, I love it. I have an IOT security system, actually. It's older, okay. older school. It's, or it was very new tech a couple of years ago yeah. when, when I got it. Um, it's probably been surpassed by the newer, cooler stuff that's out there. But I do have that, and, and right. we also have an Alexa. And one of the problems we have with Alexa, in particular my wife, are issues around privacy. And that's one of the big yeah. um, questions for me about IoT is, how are you going to be careful about privacy? 
how are you really going to guarantee it? Right. So that's, that's, I think, a big question out there. Well, I think we could probably hop on into our conversation with Maximus and see if he could help us out with that. Maximus. <laughs> Very nice. So uh-huh. without further ado, right. here is our episode with CEO yep. and co-founder of Kangaroo, Maximus Yaney. Hey, everybody. We are so excited to have a really very special guest with us today from the company Kangaroo, which we're going to hear a lot about. One of the co-founders and the CEO, Maximus Yaney, is with us. How are you doing, Maximus? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. We, uh, we actually have a good story about how we got to you. But before we get into that, where are we talking to you today from? Uh, we're, we're based out of New York. We've got an office just south of Union Square. So a New York guy. I've bounced around all over, but uh, born originally in, in California, Los Angeles, grew up there, and later in life made my way to, to New York, and I've kind of been here ever since. That's cool. I grew up in Southern California. Where are you from? Uh, Los Angeles, uh, Topanga, the, the Valley area there. My, my parents have a, a restaurant out there that I kind of got my... Uh, initial work ethic yeah. uh, from from uh, slaving at the family business, but it was it was an incredible experience growing Very cool. out there. Very cool. Well, let's jump right in and talk for a minute about Kangaroo. And why don't you give us, you know, a minute or two on what Kangaroo is and any other information you'd like to provide about the company? I'd absolutely be happy to. So Kangaroo is is really a smart home tech play. And we, we've started off with a entry security system and, and some of the other components that go along with it. But our, our ambitions and goals are really to build out a smart home platform that is just bringing all of the capabilities that you really can almost foresee or imagine in, in a smart home and being able to interact with sort of that home of the future, bringing them to everyone, bring, making them uh, available in a affordable price point at a, with an accessibility and a real focus on user experience to just make it all very, very simple and, and easy to, to set up. We've been uh, working on this for about 18 months now, so we're, we're fairly young, but we've already come to market with a really exciting lineup that's just part of a whole greater uh, smart home ecosystem. So what type of devices does Kangaroo offer? So our whole product roadmap is really touching on almost everything that you could think of in the, in the home. What we've come to market with in, in the first 18 months of our existence is a sort of reimagined, re-engineered, hubless, Wi-Fi-based home security system that includes your motion entry sensors, includes a, a flood water sensor, humidity, temperature, a smoke detector listener, a siren keypad, fob devices to uh, check in, check out, as well as a, an, an application that the team at Kangaroo has just put a whole lot of TLC into that user experience to make it super simple. And uh, some really exciting things are coming up on the camera side of the equation where we're bringing a lot of, of those devices in in a really exciting, innovative way have not been fully announced yet, but we actually just found out last night that that we uh, are a CES 2020 uh, award, Innovators Award honoree in the uh, smart home category. Oh. So that's going to be announced in New York City on November 7th. So super, super excited about that. And we're going to be uh, launching that, that product line at CES with really some disruptive camera products that we that are very much just focused on privacy and, and we think we'll finally get people comfortable with really having cameras in the, in their home and it's it's just been a first principles thinking approach to how do you solve the the privacy sure uh, component of cameras that we're all just super nervous about sure sure in fact when you work that out you're gonna have to I'm gonna have to put you on the phone with my wife <laughs> Because uh, she she really wants to have some cameras around the house, but she's really concerned about the privacy part of it. So, well, we've already we've already worked it out, and we are just about going into mass production, and we'll have the first mass production units at CES on on January seventh. Okay. So, well, we'll, it's uh, 
it's exciting. I won't quite give away the full sure. piece of it just yet, but it's it's around the corner. And the, the first announcement again is, is November 7th here. So with our, our private camera. When you talk about home security and your product, you're not just talking about keeping intruders out, right? No, you know, that's, that's certainly part of it. But I, I think from a more holistic level and why this team came into this space and, and why we got really excited about smart home technology was we really saw, you know, and I, I think this dates back to Tony Fidel and, and, and Nest um, just as, as the iPhone was, was really coming out and, and really delivering the first sort of thermostat, the first really IoT device that started to get some significant traction and scale, you know, especially with the, the early adopter world. Right. And, and sort of in a way broke the glass ceiling for IoT. And, and it was from that example that, the rest of the world started to wake up and say, wow, this is, this is amazing that we all of a sudden can extend our, our consciousness remotely back, back home, back into our home and interact with it. So we very early on, you know, this entire team came from a very uh, kind of tech focused background. We love taking the raw materials of the earth and building things, but in particular, now, I, IoT, we, we very much saw it as being part of the physical world, starting to wake up around us, starting to get some form of connectivity and basic intelligence where we could interact with it. And that was that was the big motivator for us to be fundamentally part of something that would be so moving where it, it really is a step function change in value at a, at a species level, holistically uh, speaking. And so... We're, we're excited to do our little tiny part. You know, we're, we're, we're a little tiny startup at this point, but um, to do our small part to help help push that forward and, and um, help help bring the species up in a, in a small way. So um, that's the way we, the CIOT. And, and obviously we looked at what our entry point into that was and it, it, it came to home security. Um, home security was an obvious entry point. It was something that I had grown up watching my well, well, certainly, you know, water damage is not something that your consumers typically focus too much on, but it, it's certainly something that from an actuarial perspective, you know, looking at the, the loss uh, ratios, uh, water and, and, and flood is just such a massive portion of uh, frequency and, and severity that it, um, it, it's really critical to the insurers and, and that obviously directly affects the consumers long term through through reduced premium. You're re you're in the IoT space now, but that's not really where you come from so much, right? I mean, your background is kind of the opposite, not in the house but in the sky, is that right? You know, we we've uh, we've certainly done a lot of things and this team has has done uh, some very diverse uh, companies uh, everything from high altitude solar powered uh, drones designed to stay aloft for years at a time and, and provide internet to the 3 billion folks without it to uh, kinetic energy launch, uh, space launch systems. But most recently, the, the company that we built, uh, which started out of my apartment and, and ultimately we uh, IPO'd on NASDAQ, but um, through that journey, that was, that was uh, essentially selling core durable goods on mm -hmm. Amazon and going up against some of the biggest brands in the world, going uh, into categories of goods, appliances, things like things like dehumidifier. If you have a basement right. uh, in this country and you're going online to buy a dehumidifier, you're probably buying one of our dehumidifiers. And you know, we, we went into that space and, and it was through the experience of competing on Amazon, which was a pretty ruthless environment, very challenging environment. And it, it very much came down to cost and the sort of value of that, that brand as the proxy for quality or proxy for trust had really been supplanted by social proof. And so the, the company that could deliver the best product as reviewed by, by uh, everyone's peers at the lowest cost would be the one that <clears throat> that would really win the market. And so 
when when we we spent five years from that sort of apartment to IPO trajectory, and the the thing that really became internalized for us was that we needed to deliver product at a cost that the mainstream consumer could afford, and that was just something that absolutely became core to our DNA because on Amazon, which was sort of a great equalizer for all all brands and all products. We very quickly learned that if we were priced too high, sure, that sure that uh, consumers would would flee. They would not pick that product up, and then those products will tip one way or the other. And so, literally, the difference of being at ninety six dollars or ninety seven dollars wouldn't just be oh, it's a one dollar difference. It would mean the difference of ten x <laughs> wow delta in in your sales velocity because the ninety seven dollar product would tip the wrong way and the $96 product would tip the right way and then continue to pick up more and more momentum until there was a a 10x delta between it. So it was going through five years of that process, living that every day that our entire team just internalized that to a borderline obsessive degree. And when we came to build Kangaroo and build smart home tech, we knew that we had to cost engineer every single half penny out of the process, out of the system, out of the logistics, the shipping, the design for manufacturing, all of it in order to deliver the best possible value that today's mainstream consumer um, would be excited about, not something that we just live in the early adopter world. So that's, that's what we set out to do. And, and uh, to be a fly on the, on the wall, I think, on some of the early conversations that our team had where we would be sitting around for a half day, literally thinking about how do we get a, you know, a half a penny out of the system <laughs> by doing something a little bit smarter, a little bit simpler. Um, and uh, that we, we ended up landing where, where we're at. So obsessive about price. Uh, uh, obsessive about about value, not having waste built into the mm-hmm. system. So I, I think when you tear apart almost any product out there, you can always find waste, whether it's wasted materials, wasted packaging, waste in the logistics, waste in the way that the pallet is packed, uh, waste in the entire supply chain process. And, and that's something that Amazon over the past 20 years has really shown us is that if you cut the waste out of that system, then you can deliver incredible value to to your customers, and those customers will reward you for delivering that value, and they'll they'll reward you at scale. So, um, that was just core to core to our DNA. Lee um, is very involved at our company in workflows and process automation and process reengineering, and I think that you can probably really appreciate that. Yes, right. Lee, that. That that you find little things in there that maybe just don't need to be there. Yeah, everything has waste. I mean, and if 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 you can do your best to cut out that waste, cut out that excess dollar that doesn't need to be uh, spent. I mean, yeah, you can really be competitive in the marketplace with with the finances. And it sounds like Maximus is really bringing that from from a past life into this. And it it made me think about how we first heard about Kangaroo. Which was at which was at InsureTech, whenever you were giving away your devices, uh, just to get them out there and to get the excitement going and to get them uh, used. And at that moment, I thought, "Wow, this company's different. This company, this company knows what they're doing. They have a plan in place." And talking to you now, I realize you do. Well, to an extent, you know, one one thing that we certainly didn't plan for was to be connecting so close with the greater insurance industry. And that was just something that we didn't see at all. And we had, we came to market with the concept of let's go make the best possible smart home kit, home security system in the world and best meaning the one that would have the right impedance match that would resonate with what the consumer really wanted and was willing to pay for with the user experience. That, that they wanted. And so we just focused on, on that. And we accidentally ended up building something that was perfect for the insurance industry without even seeing it. And 
Right. You know, that happened when we were at CES literally 12 months ago. I, I wouldn't have even thought that insurance would be a channel for us or distribution. It wasn't even on our radar. And then 10 months ago, we were at CES early January, and we didn't even do a booth at CES last year. Um, but we did do a small one at the CES adjacent media show where all the journalists show up and we, we got all the, all the coverage that was good for our egos like Verge and, and uh, TechCrunch, but that doesn't typically do too much, you know, certainly depending. Um, and then we got, we got coverage from a small niche insurance uh, publication that I, I'm sure everyone here is aware of the coverager. Um, but certainly not a mainstream uh, uh, show. And, and they said, hey, wow, this is the insurance industry has been trying to solve this problem, but they've, they've not been able to do it at a price point. No one's been able to do it at a price point that you literally could just roll this out to all of your policyholders um, and deliver it in a way that those policyholders want um, with the right user experience. And so that, that was... When that happened, we immediately were, were contacted the next week by uh, a handful of carriers that said, wow, this is amazing. This is, this is perfect for what we've been trying to do. And then we very quickly started educating ourselves on um, how could we really create a, a package that would work very well for, uh, for this entire industry, um, something that would tie into the back end systems. Um, Guidewire, Duck Creek, proprietary systems tied tied directly into the claims, um, both both the claims side of it and, and the policy uh, management side, and and uh, deliver something that would create tremendous value for the insurers, both on ultimately reducing frequency and severity uh, by getting in front of these with a with a monitored system where you're looping in homeowner plus uh, a tree down to emergency response. Um, but also could help on the policy marketing side of it from a regulatory perspective, being able to essentially quote uh, lower lower rates predicated upon this sort of opt in of here's your here's your free smart home kit that comes with this policy. So right. once we put all that together, it, we got we got very excited about it, and it just ended up being sort of a, a match made in heaven without us even intending or being aware of of this. We accidentally. By focusing on the consumer first, we built something that made a lot of sense here. Yeah, it, it's funny because we've talked to several accelerators and other insure techs, and and that's not a, an altogether uncommon story where they weren't thinking about insurance, but through um, you know what whatever kind of serendipity, yeah. it turns out that wow, this is a this is a great application for the insurance industry, and I think you're absolutely right, and I can tell. You know, I know that I know that going super fast is important to you guys. And so, I mean, from 10 months ago, not even knowing that you would have any pertinence in insurance mm -hmm. to where you're to where you are today in the insurance industry, that's going super fast. Is 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 that part of what you guys are trying to achieve is to move this as quickly as you can? Um, it feels slow for us, but <laughs> Thank right. you for saying but, that. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's, that's our team. There's just, I, I feel for, so fortunate to be with the team that we've got. Um, we're about 50 people. And this, this team has, almost everyone in the company has worked together before um, in, in at least one other company. And that sort of cohesiveness and just that, that focus where it, it really is, the right people that are all together. There's no micromanagement. The everyone sort of knows what to do, and everyone takes initiative. It's it's a really incredible environment, and and it's that red tape free environment that just allows individuals and teams to to take initiative and go go execute on something. So it it, it certainly created the environment where uh, we are able to move move very quickly. Um, the last company that we had a number of us had come from, a handful of us came from, uh, was actually launching one consumer. This was the one that we you know, went from apartment to IPO. But we were launching one consumer hardware product a week at that company. So those were 
you know, those are modified white labeled products, but with a, quite a bit of, of uh, white label modification. But it was that cadence of manufacturing, logistics, marketing um, was was such was so fast that this team uh, now, when we're now launching probably about one consumer hardware product mm -hmm. every eight weeks, um, this almost feels slow to us, but obviously a much greater level of uh, thought, care, detail going into each one of the, the products today. So you want to be, I, I know that in this, at Kangaroo, in this latest project for you, being disruptive is important. How are you being disruptive at Kangaroo? So, you know, I don't think we look at being disruptive just for the sake of, of being disruptive. You know, if something works really well, that's fantastic. Let's let's uh, let's continue to make it work. That said, we, we we look at everything from a first principles perspective. So, before going out to deliver a solution we really don't look at so much the existing solutions in the market and then say, okay, how do we make these things 10% better? We step back from all of it from a first principles perspective and just look at the fundamental problem that we're trying to solve. And then say, in today's world, almost not even knowing about what solutions are out there, how would we solve that problem today? Given the technology that's at our, at our disposal, what is the best way to to solve that problem? And, and so by always coming back to first principles, it gives us a fresh view of the world and a, and a fresh view of how we would approach something. And, and oftentimes what comes out of that is a completely different way of, of doing things. And we thought through a lot of that and, and uh, the world, I mean, even looking at security, a thing that was very important for us was a hubless approach. And we realized that very early on for a number of reasons. One was that understanding how price sensitive consumers were and understanding that over the past 30, 40, 50 years, products have all been delivered to retail in full truckloads. Well, the world's changed a lot since then. You now have a world that's gone much more direct to consumer. It's gone to e-commerce. It's gone to direct individually shipped last mile delivery. People are not going into stores right. as much as, as uh, they certainly were in the past for, for everything. So where you thought about product design and packaging, the, the physical size of the product or even the weight for that matter was something that you didn't really think about. You were happy to use steel and have big packages because you weren't having to pay that last mile delivery cost. Well, in today's world, in that e-commerce world, or in the case of an insurer that decides to send a smart home kit to millions of policyholders, your last mile delivery costs are, are, are certainly going to be a part of that equation. In some cases, they can be something like 40% of your, your COGS. So we, from very early on, realized that we didn't want to have the consumer be bearing the cost of the last mile delivery for a hub. And on top of that, we also looked at, we also, we didn't want to have the consumer bearing the cost of that hub. And we didn't want to have a proprietary sensor to hub to Wi-Fi approach when Wi-Fi was essentially ubiquitous at this point. Yes. And we could leverage that, that, uh, that existing Wi-Fi infrastructure. So it, it was with a lot of that type of thinking that we said, great, let's actually make the bet on Wi-Fi, which was, that was counter to what everyone else out there was, was doing. But there was a reason for that. I, and I think that most of the other tech that was out there grew up in, grew up over the past, in some cases, more than a hundred years and was a proprietary frequency from that back to a central hub, which was then connected, connected literally via pots and you know, copper to, to a dial-up uh, service. So the topologies have changed, the networks have changed, the, the ability for us to have a full-blown computer on a single piece of silicon in every sensor now, in every edge device, and, and bring that connectivity and compute to the edge devices um, at an incredibly low cost just changed the paradigm. So that was, you know, that was something that we, we switched to. The other thing that was important to us in, in thinking about the user experience was even, even the battery side of it. Um, if my mom needs to change a battery and that product takes a CR123A lithium ion, right. 
She's right. just going to get confused. She has two kinds of batteries in her drawer, yes. big batteries and little batteries, double it, triple it. Yeah. And, and so we, we wanted to, we wanted to go with a form factor that was just ubiquitously available. Even, even triple A's kind of trip some, trip some folks up. And so we, and we bet on, uh, on, on double A's. We wanted something that was going to be globally ubiquitously available and easy for the consumer to understand. So that took a lot of extra work. Uh, it was not easy to do the power management uh, and, and build out the power efficiency of wireless devices connected over Wi-Fi that could get you know, a year plus battery life off of uh, AA batteries. But um, it was worth the engineering effort for us to, to do that up front, putting the user first, knowing that if we nail that user experience, the universe will sort of fall into place for us. Wow. You know, I, I'm sitting here thinking that, Maximus, you have a brilliant brain. It seems like you have really taught yourself and learned a lot uh, throughout your life that's really making Kangaroo this fascinating company. You're bringing all these aspects, you know, from a, from a past life or a past learning and bringing it all together in this. It's really, really interesting. It, it, you know, I, I like to circle back to where you were talking about uh, the uh, people you're working with and mm -hmm. kind of the, the environment that you have. One thing that, really separated um you know we were at the itc show and we were talking to everybody and we had the opportunity to, to talk to bryn who is just this fascinating no. person uh, who works on 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 your marketing team yep and we quickly learned that she was special that she is she is out there she is uh she understands marketing she understands what she's doing and she really cares and it sounds like you really surround yourself with people who care and and people who want the best and i'm wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit about how 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 do you make sure you have the right people in the right position there at kangaroo or any of your jobs no that's a that's a really great um really really great question and it's a question that i think about literally every day um, because, you know, I'm, I'm one person, I'm, I'm only going to be able to get so much done. And as, as a team that is executing with an incredible level of passion, that team can go change the world. So, um, you know, Bryn is a, is a great example where, you know, I've worked with her for, for a number of years now, and, and she is absolutely incredible, absolutely amazing. And, and I, I think she's probably been stifled in some other um places and where where she has just she has come into this environment and using using her as an as an example right um, this holds true for everyone where this isn't an environment of micromanaging it's an environment where we allow people to to take ownership and, and i think the way that we see our hiring uh from day one is we're out there looking for the most passionate brightest people that we can find we bring them on board and then our job is to get out of their way and support them and, and, and cut the red tape out you know, from, from them. So you know, we have a, a sort of manifesto that we live by and it's, it's got a whole bunch of sayings from all the great tech leaders over time. And it's really something that we've internalized in, into the culture. So it, it allows someone who is that baseline, really passionate overachiever to come into this organization and they're able to go pursue whatever it is that they want to pursue. So we, we tell candidates uh, this all the time that while, while we are looking to fill areas where we know we're weak um, and we're looking to bring those skill sets in, we don't really hire for roles. And so if you come in and as long as you fit that criteria of you are, you know, you're super smart and you're super passionate, then we're going to give you the, leeway to to go do whatever you want we're not going to tell you what to do we're only going to share the the high level vision and you know to to an extent in in our case that high level vision is how do we go make a billion lives a little bit better um build something that you know is going to pass the toothbrush test where mm -hmm. you've got a billion people using it once or hopefully twice a day yeah and and you know doing that obviously within the iot space and we share that high level vision and then again get out of that person's way without telling them, 
here's a job that you need to do. Here are all of your deliverables. Because if we're, if we're telling that person, here's your checklist of everything that you need to do. And if, if let's say I set that checklist, um, that person at best, the best we're going to get out of them is that they're going to do their job and they're going to do their nine to five, you know, whatever it is and do their job. But if we get out of their way and say, Hey, go pursue whatever it is in this organization that you want to pursue. And sometimes we've had some people do very different things. Like we've brought in people that, that are engineers to do engineering work, but because we get out of their way, that was the last engineering job they ever had. And they, they moved into operations because they loved operations and they were super passionate about operations and they were absolutely some of the best operators that I've ever worked with. And, and by doing that, they're now passionate about what their individual contribution is to move the wheel in an area of the business that they're really excited about. So it's, it's the people that are passionate about that, that are focused on moving that needle. Those are the kinds of people that are going to go out there and, and change the world um, where it's not a job. And, and so I think that's the, the big thing we have here is that there's really no one here who's working to just have a job. This isn't a job for, for almost anyone here. Now, the converse side of that is that that's the wrong environment for most people. Uh, a lot of people come in and say, oh, wow, this sounds like Shangri-La. I want to be a part of this. But then they show up and they start coming in at 10 and then 11 and, they're, and no one's saying anything to them and no one's giving them a list of things to do. And usually within about three weeks, it's pretty obvious, assuming we had accidentally made that wrong hire that wasn't that overachiever, right. self-driven hire, that that person is not moving the needle for the team and they're a, they're a sponge for the team, not a mirror of energy. And and uh, doesn't certainly doesn't work out with that person. Um, we do our best to, to gatekeep, but um, but we're 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 true to that. And so it's you know, things like you know, we have unlimited vacation policies and things like that. And you know, we we love those because it it's uh, it it's it's just creating it's creating an environment where everyone is is very much self driven and they're doing things fundamentally for the right reasons. Yeah, how does that work? Uh, whenever you have employees who are self driven and passionate about their jobs, there's yeah. unlimited vacation. Do any of them ever take a vacation? Um, they definitely do, okay. um, and, they, and they they take that vacation when they feel that they need to take the vacation, and they and they feel that whatever it is whatever initiative it is that they're working on is in good hands and is going to keep moving forward. Um, so it's, it's actually, I, I would say, and, and it varies. Some people don't take much vacation at all. Others, others take a, take more vacation than they would normally, uh, you know, get in a sort of metered vacation model. Right. Um, and, and it really depends on the individual and what they, what they need for them. But because these aren't jobs for us, we're, we're, on, on, on a mission to go have an impact. Um, it's, it's taken when it's needed. It's interesting. My son, my younger son, who uh, now runs a, a startup in the SMS area mm. um, and is doing really well, uh, worked for an uh, e-commerce company for many years and they had an unlimited vacation policy. And I think the thing that that drove people to, I know it did for him was, to take be much better vacations, mm. much much more adventurous vacations, mm. because he, he had it. And I mean, he went to Colombia, and I, I can't even remember all the different places that he went. He he never abused it, yeah, at all. Yeah. But uh, always always made the most out of it, and um, it, it probably goes hand in hand with the kind of people that you're trying to, you know, have on board. Yeah. Culture starts at hiring and, and you've got to have the right, the right hiring process and, and put the right team in place. And uh, then, then it all falls into place. I love that. Rob and I were talking about culture just the other day. And I love that phrase. Culture starts at hiring. Wow. Well, thank you, Maximus. That was really good. I enjoyed that. It seems like due to your, your hiring, due to your culture, due to all this, you're going to have some great success. And, you know, our, you know, I, I guess I'm curious, our, are you currently working with any insurance companies, uh, giving them, uh, you know, working on packages? Is that, is that in the works? We, we are, we are actually launching a, uh, a, 
pilot with uh, with Hippo here in a few days. Yeah, I mean, Hippo. Monday, actually. And that is, uh, we're, we're, we're super excited about that. And they were able to move very quickly. They're working with a number of partners. Right. And we're, we're, we're super excited to be one of those partners and, and to uh, ultimately have helping, helping Hippo to uh, go, go shake things up. So it's, uh, it's a fantastic partnership. It's just, it's wonderful working with the people there. Yeah, we, we like Hippo a lot. You know, in fact, I, they're making quite a name. They yep. are. And I went to their website just last week and uh, I live in Texas and, and, and Hippo writes here. And so I wanted to just get a quote Yep. and it, you know, you can get a quote in oh, 60 seconds or so. And I thought, yeah, sure. Whatever. It was amazing. Yep. I got my quote in 60 seconds. They knew everything about my house. If, if I, had, I, I had actually gotten a new roof this year, so uh, I could update my record mm -hmm. and within 60 seconds, I had a quote. And it was, it was an amazing quote. And it talked about this quote is based on smart technology, yeah. right? As long as you have X and, and as long as this is in your home and all that, you can get a great quote. And sure enough, it was a really good quote. Yeah. Uh, so I may have a little bit of hippo in my future. Who knows? Well, that's fantastic. Hope, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll be running on the kangaroo stack with that, but absolutely. Um, yeah, we're, we're excited to have the opportunity to work with uh, Asaf and, and the team there. Um, it's uh, it, it's amazing. We're, we're excited to, to see where this will go. So is your marketing plan D to C or is it with partners who are distributing your product like insurance companies what, or, or yeah. all of the above? Or what, it what's is, your plan it is there? Certainly, it's certainly all of the above. I mean, I think the thing that we... The way that we look at the world is we put the user and the customer first, and that is absolutely number one. You know, then comes our, our partners, our team, and very last comes our investors. So, so we will do the, we will do, and we are committed to doing the right thing for the consumer first. And, and if we do that and we're successful doing that, then all of those other partners uh, all the way downstream will, will benefit. And, and we, we, we try to find the right uh, investors that that understand that and are, and are happy um, being being last in that uh, in that list. But it's also the thing that, that ultimately benefits them. So from a marketing perspective, uh, certainly direct to consumer channels, we're building out, uh, building out Amazon as, as a very strong sales platform and, and, and channel there. And we're working very closely with Amazon. Um, we are on the cusp of going into retail in a really big way. So you'll be seeing us soon in um, a number of, of retailers, obviously, you know, in, uh, in Office uh, Depot, but Staples will be in uh, beta stores shortly in pop-up stores in, in Best Buy, um, pop-up stores in Sam's Club, beta in Best Buy, and uh, a number of other uh, big retailers that are uh, coming very quickly. So strong presence in retail, direct to consumer, uh, through web, uh, certainly strong presence through uh, through Amazon, and and then the channel that we're really the most excited about is the the insurance partnership that B two B to C model. Um, we we think that the way we've engineered out cost from this system, it makes it such a light lift for large insurers to be able to roll this out ubiquitously, roll it out to every policy holder at scale. Um, we're, we're just, we're just super excited about that channel. And there's a, uh, there's a, an opportunity to get in front of tens of millions of consumers um, through that, through that model. Maximus, I want to ask you about Google. I know that uh, one of your companies, Titan was purchased by Google, which, you know, for many tech entrepreneurs is, is, a, is a dream and a, or a dream come true. Uh, and, and, and you were involved there for a while. What can you share with us about uh, what you learned at or from Google? How did it help you to grow? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. And Google was an incredible experience for me and, and our team. And uh, aside from the sort of euphoria of, of, of having that exit and selling your company to, to Google, and especially after all the hard work and the, the scrappy uh, you know, rice and beans dinners every night of um, all of a sudden being invited into a world of incredible abundance, not just financially, but 
an abundant way of thinking, an abundant mindset. And the, the, the learnings from Google are very difficult to sum up in, in, in just a few minutes. But um, when we came in, we, we then got to go work on uh, Larry Page's special projects and, and work, did some really, really cool, very exciting things there. But I think the, the biggest lesson for me personally interacting with all of the, the people at Google was it, was, it was all about culture. And it was, it was a company that was still a startup at scale. And, and that was just fascinating for me because earlier in my life, I did, I had a consulting company very early on in my early twenties, a tech consulting company doing big data. And I had clients, a whole bunch of fortune 500 clients that were very, very corporate through and through and coming into Google, it's a very large organization, they had managed to re retain an agility and a bias for action and an ability to get things done at lightning speed that, that was very, very, very precious. And, and it is, you know, that really is, that way of thinking is, is what makes Google so special. And the, the cultural learnings from there and we put all of this up on a manifesto on, on the wall, but it's it's a culture of yes. It's not a it's not a culture of no and let me take that up the flagpole and all of that. It's a it's a culture of absolutely go go do that. How can we help go go do that? No matter how crazy or ridiculous the idea is. And then what that engenders is an entire population of of Googlers that um that are so passionate about what they're doing. And you know, a lot of it fails and they, they embrace that failure. Um, I think one of my favorite stories from Google that actually sums up the culture quite a bit is, is at one of the uh, all hands meetings, there was a, a guy that came up on stage that told his story about how he was working on, on core search on the DevOps team. And he crashed all of Google for about four minutes, which was something like $4 million in you know, lost ad revenue for the four minutes. But as soon as he really had pushed a piece of code to production and he realized that he had just crashed Google, he immediately rolled it back and then shot out a message to his team and said, guys, I think I just crashed Google. And of course, the team then descended on it. And by that time, his, his rollback was already uh, making its way through the system and, and came back online. But Google did a really incredible thing uh, after that. They, they, they nominated him and bonus. They gave him a $4,000 bonus for crashing Google, for, but really for doing the right thing. And he, he did the right thing by you know, a number of things. One is he had the ambition, you know, audacity to go try, experiment, and you know, push some new uh, feature to the production environment. And you know, even the fact that a single person could do that in a company like Google without that going through layers and layers of approval, et cetera, et cetera, was, was fantastic. Then he immediately reversed what he had done once he realized and, and sent a message out to alert his team. And I think there's a lot of environments that we've all had exposure to in, in different ways where the culture would have been to brush it under the table and see if maybe the rollback went through and whether or not anyone notices that uh, the sure. system was maybe down. Sure. Yeah. And, and that's because there's not a culture of it's okay to fail. There's not a culture that embraces failure because by embracing failure, that means that you're running more experiments. You're trying more, more new things. And occasionally some of those new things are, you know, some of those moonshots are, are going to going to connect and you're going to knock it out of the park. So that, the, the fact that, that they had that kind of culture and then literally you know, brought him up on this on the stage helps, of course, everyone else in the organization internalize that, wow, it's actually OK to it's OK to fail. And because it's OK to fail, I'm going to go try another 10 things. Yeah. Um, and that's something that we've just tried to carry with us in our you know, startup ways throughout everything we do. Going fast and getting things done, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I mean, you work with Hippo in the, uh, you're working with Hippo now. You pr I assume you're probably talking to others, but you know, one of our biases, I, I would say that has built over time, both Lee and I are industry veterans who've been in the insurance industry a long time. It's very slow. Mm -hmm. It's very slow. Decisions come slowly. Change comes slowly. Although, I mean, I will say it's evolving and changing, yep. but it's exciting mm -hmm. to have 
um, the pressing immediacy people coming into insurance now, like yourselves. That's really exciting. But it, I mean, that must be an interesting uh, difference for you to, to be in a business where, where slow is okay. Well, I don't, I don't know that it's, I, I think that what happens or the perception of, of insurance being slow is, is there certainly is scale that needs to be navigated. That said, um, while it takes a long time to go through a pilot and go through that process, especially with a very, very large carrier, it, it's certainly done in measured steps. And then when you do get to roll out, you're rolling out at such an incredible scale that it's actually quite a bit faster. It's more of a step function change than had you been trying to draw this line from A to B. So I, I look at it more as there's there there needs to be more patience, but that that patience is going to yield some some really incredible things. All that said, obviously, you know, as, as you're acutely aware with InsureTech, InsureTech is stirring things up. There's a lot of change. There's a, there's a lot of change across the entire planet, across our species right now that uh, technology is, is touching our lives and changing things at a rate that it never has before. And we're, we're all scrambling to adapt to that in our, in our various industries. And, um, you know, th th there's some, there are some exciting uh, uh, thought leaders and, and innovators in, in, in insurance that are taking those, those first steps. And it's exciting to see groups like uh, Hippo um, taking those steps and, and the rest of the industry watching closely to, to sort of see where they're going and, um, you know, how, how they can also, uh, take those, take those steps as well. Maximus, w one of the things that you guys are doing with the kangaroo is you have a membership. And in fact, I think on your website, it even says you can get kangaroo for free with a membership. What's that? And what's that about? And, and, and how's that unique? Sure. So what what we're what the membership really is 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 the it's, it's a subscription that includes features like professional monitoring, uh, integration with uh, uh, various other systems, Amazon, Alexa, Google Home, um, a number of other digital features that that are in the app, and and that allows us also to roll out some very rich uh, rich feature sets in, into uh, into the application. Um, that are part of that, but really, what's driving that is is that's the that's the professional monitoring on the back end, where there's a human in the loop that is uh, responding to those those alerts when you're not home, you're traveling, you're on a plane, you're you know, not picking that up for whatever reason, and then to dispatch a emergency response. Um, we're we're just launching our our kits right now, and. Obviously, with the way that that program works with the insurance industry is certainly very customizable to their policyholder base and the way that they're doing it. But the typical retail model that we have and, and you know, on Amazon and our website is someone will buy that initial kit, whichever is the right one that, that fits for their home or for their apartment. Um, and then there's a, a $99 membership model that uh, provides them with the rest of those services. If, if they want that. Is that annually? Yes. Yes. 99. Yes. Per, per year. <laughs> per right. year. Right. Which is certainly a disruptive cost. Yes. Because uh, I know, I mean, in the day we, we have a security system in our home and in the day it was, you know, far more expensive. It just continues to drop yep. um, um, as time goes on. That was, that was a core, again, a core thesis is we really looked at what was driving those, those cost structures and why were consumers paying as much as they were for service that through the use of modern day technology just did not need to be at those kinds of price points. And again, looking at how do we do the right thing for the, for the user? But the, the thing that really got us the most excited about the space, at least the entry point of security, was that some 80% of households didn't even have it. And you know, I, again, I watched my, my mother, uh, I, I watched, grew up watching her uh, sort of fumble with and, and interface with one of your more traditional security mm -hmm. systems, paying very high monthly fees for that. And when it uh, came to provide those same kind of services, we just looked at that and said, we can do a lot better and we can do something that is going to be security for all. 
and it's going to resonate and be affordable and, and accessible by those 80% of homes that, that have been underserved. Well, very cool. We, uh, we have our little kangaroo devices, truth be told, don't we? We kind of, we kind of, yes, we do put a gun. Well, there was a gun involved <laughs> and Bryn and, and, and we got us some devices. So, uh, we're, we we're, do we're, have a device. That's great. Hope, hopefully you can get the full kit. It's which is uh, just landed now and is, is now on Amazon actually. Well, you know what? Wonderful. We happen, we happen to know the owner of the company. So we're going <laughs> to see if we we'll, can we'll, get a deal there. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can figure out. Uh -huh, uh, maybe we'll put them on a podcast. Who knows? <laughs> Who um, knows? Last question. Kangaroo, what gives? Yes. Where'd that come from? Wow. Um, so I, I fumbled and picked the wrong name of the company to start looking for something that was a little more cool and, 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 and techy and, and all of that. And we brought in a creative director from uh, Google Creative Labs who took one look at it and said, what in the world are you guys doing? You have an opportunity to completely disrupt this space from a branding perspective. And he pulled up all the brands and security and and he's looking, you know, they're all blue and you know, they're all these, right. you know, this, this right. kind of look and feel let's go in with something with, you know, bright colors, something that's, that's more playful, more friendly, more approachable. And, and we've got to change the name of the company. Mm -hmm. And so the co-founders all, we, we came as kind of came to the side and, and, uh, said, boy, this guy, we just hired is <laughs> we've got to change the name of the company, but we've already got t-shirts. Uh, yeah. we can't do this. And That's a crisis. Yeah. It was a crisis. It, it was, it was, uh, it's, it's actually incredibly difficult just from the identity that the organization builds up to say, wow, we might be called something different now. Um, but, but fortunately we listened to him and we went through 50,000 names with a whole criteria and a whole process. And, and, uh, it was quite, quite the, uh, project, but we, uh, in the last 50 names, we landed on kangaroo, which just fit. It, ha it had the global recognition that we wanted. It's literally the same across practically every language out there. Oh, cool. um, That's smart. And, and it was, so it was something that we knew we could scale with global. It was one of the criteria and we had a whole bunch of other criteria and it just met all of them. And um, once we, it was tough to do it, but once we did it and pulled the trigger, we never looked back and we just, we fell in love with the name and the, the iconography around it and everything. Amazing. And it and kangaroos have a pouch. So Yes. Yes. It's where you put your most precious things. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean there's yeah, I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of that. As the marketer here, I I think so. But well it's uh, you know, it's it's uh even just in the internal cultural mileage, the pun value is so high, we just have so much more fun around yeah, the office exactly. now with, with the name. Exactly. Where would you rather work? Um <laughs> XYZ. <laughs> Security right. systems or kangaroo? Come on now. Kangaroo. There you go. It's a lot of fun. So we're going to jump out of this interview. We're going to, or I guess we're going to hop out. Um, hop out. But, but Jeez. first we have to say thank you so much. What a pleasure thank you. and, and an thank honor you. to have you on. And, um, you and um, just go kill it out there with kangaroo. And, and uh, would you join us again maybe sometime in the future to tell us how things are going? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, we've got a, a lot of work in, in, in front of us and a lot of things that we um, need, need to work hard to do. And we'd be honored and excited to, to come share that uh, with you at some point. Great. Well, thanks again. And, um, and we'll talk to you soon. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, you know, we're almost to 50 episodes, so we've had almost 50 people on the podcast. That's um, a lot. And there's like the top 10 smartest and deep thinkerist. And okay. Maximus goes on that list. He's on the deep thinkerist. Don't you think? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I enjoyed our conversation there about the culture, uh, being a yes culture and, you know, cu cu and culture starts at hiring. I thought that little bit of the podcast was a really <laughs> interesting tidbit. Absolutely. I mean, other than the great stuff that they're doing at Kangaroo and the interesting stuff and what the product is, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, why do some companies that sell one thing succeed greatly and other companies that sell the same thing don't? Right. Because it's about more than product. It is more than product. 
you know, you have the product, but you have to have the people surrounding the product to make it successful. And that goes, you know, like everything, a marketing, the sales, the operation side, all of sure. that. I didn't count how many times he said team or my team or our team or the yeah. team, but it was many, 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 many. And I think that that's a big takeaway here is that if you have a really strong team, you can do really strong things. And yeah. like what he said about their uh, realization and revelation about insurance, that just 10 months ago, they weren't even thinking about insurance. And it was kind right. of serendipity accidentally that they came into it. And now not, are, not only, I mean, they're not just sniffing around, they're in it. Boom. Right. And he's, you know, you know, I'm sitting here thinking I, I had actually worked a little bit with kangaroo before this and I had, I had set up my kangaroo device. We told them that we had a kangaroo device and I, I do, I set mine up. Uh, but when I set mine up, my, my internet wasn't working. It wasn't a kangaroo thing. It was my internet. It was just off at the time. Uh, we just had a rainstorm. It, it made sense. So uh, I had an error whenever I tried to set up my my kangaroo. And I thought, oh, well, I know what it is. It, it's that. Well, all of a sudden, my cell phone rings. And it is somebody from kangaroo saying, hi, I'm so-and-so. And I, I just saw that that there was an error in setting up your, your kangaroo. You know, is there anything we can do to help? We're, we're here to help you however you need us. And I talked to her and I said, thank, thank you so much for calling me. This is, this is really kind of you. And uh, I said, no, it's on my end. She goes, well, if you ever need anything, call this number back anytime, any day we're here. Have a wonderful day. And I thought, wow, that they have somebody who is actually on the other end of this thing, taking care of it and caring that it gets set up. And now I talked to Maximus and I realized, that's because he has people who care. He works around that and it shows. Mm -hmm. It was a, you know, I've just put two and two together here about this, but I was very impressed with that. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with the product and I'm very impressed with the CEO and co-founder. Right. And we've had um, other IoT plays on before, like Notion comes to mind. And, and, yeah, yeah, and I think it was very much the same uh, yes. with Brett at, at Brett Jurgens, And that, yeah. that these are people that are, deeply invested that care that this isn't just this isn't my scheme to make a living it's about right. honestly helping people and not just saying it but but doing it like yeah having somebody on staff who called you right that wasn't an accident that's that's a no. cultural imperative yeah it's a passion right mm -hmm. they have a passion to make sure that their product works so it can change people's lives and they can make a difference so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maximus, for being on. Uh, really, really appreciate that. Yeah, and uh, we thank all you for listening. We ask you to subscribe to our crazy little podcast as we are getting really excited that we're coming up on our 50th show, which, um, yeah. we'll, which we'll be recording really soon, a special little broadcast to celebrate 50 episodes. Very excited. 50 and, episodes. That's a but, big deal. But none of it would matter. None of it would matter if uh, you guys didn't listen to it. So we're super, super appreciative and grateful right. for your uh, involvement with, with us. And uh, until next time, we'd like to say... Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>